Welcome back to another episode of OVGYN Reacts. I literally just spent the last hour rearranging my setup in here. Lights, computer, camera, microphone, everything, so that I could sit while I filmed this video. Today's episode is I Didn't Know I Was Pregnant, which seems to be a universal favorite around here. Let's just jump right into it. March of 2008, 23-year-old Nicole returns home, looking forward to a new chapter in her life after a split with her husband of three years. A couple of weeks after she returns home, Nicole gets her period, but she is concerned because it's much lighter than usual. Me and my husband weren't using any protection. I had went and got myself a pregnancy test, uh, took it, and it came up negative questionable period with a negative pregnancy test, which probably was just taken a little bit too early. What that was would be implantation bleeding. And it's usually just light spotting, not usually like a period. After that, I would get my period once a month, just a little bit lighter. You can have bleeding throughout pregnancy. About 50% of pregnancies that are normal will experience bleeding at some point. It doesn't usually come in a cyclic, regular manner, but if you're not consistently and distinctly tracking your periods, you may not notice that it's off or kind of random. For the first time in her life, starts suffering from indigestion. She thought it was due to certain types of foods, and so she was trying to change her diet a little bit. Let's have some tea, Mom. She's having heartburn. That's a common complaint in pregnancy. This is gastroesophageal reflux. The reason this happens more often in people who are pregnant is because the elevated levels of certain hormones like estrogen cause relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter. So you have the esophagus going down and there's basically a door that shuts between the esophagus and the stomach. And normally it shuts and keeps the acid from coming back up through that door and getting in the esophagus. Those elevated hormones basically make the door really loose and it can open more easily. So people have a tendency to get more heartburn when they're pregnant. On October 24th, Four days into her parents' cruise, the pain returns, waking Nicole in the early morning. March was when we had the missed or questionable period with the negative pregnancy test, which probably was just taken a little bit too early. April, May, June, July, August, September, October. So we're like probably a little over 30 weeks now, if that's accurate. Around 9.30, I decided to get up and go into the bathtub to see if a hot bath would relieve some of the pain. So I just put my hand down there and just tried to feel what was going on. And I felt a foot. Ah! That's not the position that we want the baby to come out in. I was in total shock that it's a human inside of me. Something that seems to always happen in these, when I talk about it is some person comes in the comments and says, you can deliver babies breach, it's fine. Hold on, Susan, I understand you can deliver babies breach and it's fine sometimes. Most deliveries are fine most of the time, but we have science to base the reason that we get nervous about breach deliveries on. This is a particularly scary type of breach delivery where the foot is coming out first. I need a prop. <laughs> You can't find a baby. Although I'm partial to this pink sloth, I think I'm going to go with this one because I think you'll be able to see what I'm explaining a little better. This is vagina and baby's coming out that way. This would be vertex. That means the head's coming first. It's what we like. We'd appreciate if the babies would do that. What she's describing is footling breach, which would be like this and usually is just one foot. This would be called frank breach. The bottom is first, both legs are in pike position up by baby's head. If the knees were bent, kind of in a crisscross applesauce, this is called complete breach. The foot comes out, you can see that this is a lot less diameter and could easily slip through an incompletely dilated cervix. So the hips and the head won't come out you start seeing increasing risks of entrapment and resulting hypoxic or low oxygen injuries to the baby's brain. There is a subset of people 
who likely fall into a group where breach delivery can be safe if they are chosen appropriately and the correct person attends their delivery. I guess mother instinct had just kicked in and I did what I had to do. I had stuck the baby's foot back inside me, tried to rotate the baby. I appreciate the valiant effort, but if the baby's foot has delivered, there's absolutely no way that you'll get that all the way back up into the uterus and turn the baby. At that point, I had just started yelling for my brother. She was saying, I'm having a baby. I saw her the night before and she looked absolutely normal. I love the two actors that they've chosen for this episode because the brother's facial expressions are giving me life. There's just a ton of questions. I was drawing blanks. So I actually went into the bathroom and I gave my sister the phone so that she could explain what was going on. <laughs> oh my gosh. Can you... Can you... I totally understand why he reacted that way. However, can you imagine being the person on the 911 line? My sister is in the bathtub, said she's having a baby, but I, she wasn't pregnant yesterday, but today she's having a baby. And you know what? Actually, let, let me just... I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go get her. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let you talk to her. I, I can't fully explain the situation. I'm, I'm gonna let you talk to her. I'm starting to realize that this is really happening. At that point, I said, you know what, Stephen, I can't really talk right now. You're gonna have to relay the information. Stephen, you know, I can't exactly talk right now. Um, there are two feet coming out of my vagina. <laughs> I love them. That's the best. I wish there was audio from that 911 call. Still, only the legs are out. I knew at that point it couldn't really even breathe. I didn't know if the baby was alive or dead, and that was my biggest fear. Totally reasonable fear. They don't need to breathe when they're inside. They just need to have blood flow and oxygenation, which happens through the umbilical cord. Whether the baby is oxygenating well comes down to if the umbilical cord is being compressed. The fact that she can't also feel the umbilical cord is really reassuring. There's still a chance that it has come through the cervix with the legs and it's just not all the way out of the vagina and she can't feel it. You, know, you have cervix here and maybe vagina here and you've got little feet dangling out at the bottom. The umbilical cord can either be up here, staying inside the uterus, giving the baby plenty of blood flow, or it can be dropping down and looping and coming through the cervix along with the legs. And if that's the case, then you worry about cord compression. Once the baby's out further to the bottom, to the neck, then the umbilical cord is much more likely to be compressed because once you have bottom all the way out of the opening of the vagina where you can see it on the outside, then the cervix is up here, umbilical cord is here, almost certainly getting some degree of compression of the umbilical cord. It was only two to three pushes. Baby was a girl. She was not moving. Black and blue bruises all up and down her legs, her arms. The newborn suffers from thrombocytopenia, a condition where its blood cannot clot normally. So neonatal thrombocytopenia, which is low platelets, is a relatively rare diagnosis, and it's certainly rare to have it be so significant that you can tell baby has something going on because it has bruises at the time of birth. That was my main thing the whole entire time was, is my baby alive? <laughs> True or false, a baby's heart rate is approximately twice that of a healthy adult. Your answer when we return. Your answer, true. The heart of a newborn baby beats between 130 and 160 times a minute. I started crying at that point, knowing that my baby was alive. <laughs> It was the best sound that I could have ever heard. The baby is severely underweight and covered in bruises. Ambulance rushes Nicole to the hospital. I wonder what her gestational age is because calculating from March to October, this baby most certainly is preterm. The more premature you are, the more likely the baby is to be in a presentation other than head down. Listen, uh... Nicole just had a baby. Nicole had a baby. The day she was born, I promised her as I held her that I would always be there for her. And I wasn't there. Even though I had no control over it, I felt so I had broken my promise to her. I felt that right in my mom feels. 
Once the ambulance reaches the hospital, the doctors determine that the three pound, four ounce newborn is premature and at risk because its blood is not clotting properly. They rush her baby to the NICU. Three pounds, four ounces is pretty tiny. So that's either IEGR, which is growth restricted baby who is like 35 to 36 weeks or that baby's maybe 30 or 32 weeks, which I think adds up to the March to October timeline. I appreciate that they've included this episode with a not so straightforward delivery because I think it highlights a little bit more how things go. It's not always just, oh my gosh, I didn't know I was pregnant. Oh look, a baby, everything is so good. Sometimes it's a little more like this. I honestly thought that the baby wasn't gonna make it. The baby was approximately eight weeks early. She wasn't able to breathe completely on her own. So eight weeks early, about 32 weeks, the most common thing that those babies will have trouble with is needing oxygen or BiPAP or CPAP. So you can see right here, they have this big tube on the baby's face. That's a CPAP, so it's helping baby breathe. And then the second most common thing they have problems with is temperature regulation. So the baby's probably in some kind of either isolate or warmer of some sort. And then the third thing they usually struggle with is eating and gaining weight. I felt guilty because I didn't know I was pregnant with her. I'm supposed to protect my baby and I didn't, you know, I didn't take the necessary steps and keeping her healthy. I felt very alone. I hate this. We all do the best we can with the information we have, right? I just feel for her because she's tearing up. I don't know how many years later this is, but she's tearing up. It's obvious that she has some deep-seated trauma or at least guilt related to this. I think it's really important for all of us to know and to express that we do the best we can with the information we have. The same thing for her mom going on the cruise and then feeling guilty she wasn't there. Like you can't be hard on yourself for things that you never could have conceivably included in your realm of possibilities. In the comments, every time I do one of these, there's people that are just like, oh my gosh, how did they not feel the baby move, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I can't answer that. I have to give these people the benefit of the doubt that whether they physically didn't know because it wasn't apparent or they mentally didn't process because they couldn't accept that reality. We won't ever know that. It honestly does not matter a single bit because you process it the same, whether it's that you physically didn't have signs and symptoms or you mentally couldn't process them as a possibility. It's traumatic and you can tell by the fact that she's still processing this years later. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Doctors closely monitor Riley and her thrombocytopenia slowly goes away as her body begins producing the platelets it needs for her blood to clot properly. Battery on my camera that I was using has completely died with zero warning. It's 1.49 in the morning and I am not going to try to figure out where the extra battery is. I'm just gonna throw this other camera up there. We're gonna film the rest of this and we will get through this together, you guys. We will get through this together. Doctors let Nicole hold her daughter for the first time. I finally got to have that mother-daughter bond. After four days, it was overwhelming. I was beyond happy. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. I don't care, just click on something. If you really liked it, subscribe. Kind to yourself, to each other, to me. In the comments, be kind. And I will see you next time. And don't forget to wash your hands and stay away from people.